Hi and welcome to this short video showcasing 15 quick tips to improve your patrols in the early access U-Boat video game. The game initially doesn't start you off with a full complement of resources. If you take out the boat without any additional rations, you may find your crew starves to death rapidly on patrol. This will likely be the death of your crew, as there's very little you can do to recover if the crew begins to starve. So make sure to take lots of extra rations beyond those that the game gives you at the start in order to avoid this. You can also take additional fuel blunt torpedoes, which are highly recommended. If you don't use them, it doesn't really cost you anything as they're available in the next patrol anyway, so be sure to fill up your boat. The game starts you off with a radio officer who isn't on the deck of your boat. You can't use this officer on patrol due to the starting officer cap, but you can send them to headquarters in order to start researching technology. Some technologies, however, require an engineer or leader officer, so be sure to recruit as many different kinds of officers early on as are available in order to be able to send them on to HQ later. When you start the game, you have only 17 of your 18 crew slots filled, and some spare crew on land. This means you can pick up one of them to go sailing on your first patrol. Don't forget to buy ammunition for your 88mm gun. High explosive ammo is by far the most useful against freighters, as it is very likely to start fires which are really important for sinking critical ships. In U-boat, freighters can be very hard to sink. In order to get HE ammo from the quartermaster at base, you'll need to complete the appropriate research at headquarters. That said, armor piercing ammo is essentially required against patrol boats, so if you're planning on going near British shores, be sure to take some of them along. They're also there for nothing, and they're what's available at the start, so grab them if you've got some spare space. When you requisition resources from shore, they'll be put in your storage. You can clear up more space in your storage, and therefore have space for even more resources, if you put them in the appropriate places. You can put food in the galley, and load your 88mm ammunition into the gun. This can be time consuming, so be sure to allocate additional crew to an officer doing this task. Once these tasks are done, you'll have more space available in your storage to be able to take extra rations or other items. Now that you've finally set sail after all that micromanagement, one of the most important resources is your diesel fuel. You can save a huge amount of diesel fuel by manning diesel engine and navigation stations with appropriate officers and supporting them with additional crew. By assigning two crew to an engineer in the diesel room and two crew to the boat swain as they navigate, you can get a huge 50% bonus of fuel time. Note that the game doesn't account for this bonus in the fuel remaining estimate, but it is working nonetheless, and it allows you to have much longer patrols and worry less about running out of fuel in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. If you are doing a deep sea patrol, plot a course that avoids going near land in order to minimise the risk of being intercepted by Allied aircraft or the Royal Navy Home Fleet. A U-boat's biggest advantage is the ability to pick and choose their engagements. This is one way of taking advantage of that. Radio officers have a special bonus when operating the boat's hydrophone. You may notice that they have two hydrophone options. One of these options allows them to have a second crew member, who can be an officer or an ordinary sailor, assist with using the hydrophone. This provides an efficiency bonus to the hydrophone operator when targeting contacts, so it is very useful during an ambush. When you want to run silent under the waves in order to hide from enemy hydrophones, there are a few actions you want to take. First, turn the lights to blue, which tells the crew to go to silent running in order to gain bonuses to oxygen consumption. Slow the engines in order to prevent cavitation. 
Cavitation is very loud bubbling caused by the propellers turning too fast, which will give you away easily. Set the depth steers to manual. If you wish to remain at periscope depth in bad weather, allocate an officer to the depth steers to reliably maintain depth. Otherwise, you risk breaching the water and becoming visible. Last, but definitely not least, turn off the ship's gyroscope. The gyroscope is very loud and doesn't need to be on all the time to assist in navigation. Taking these actions will greatly decrease your overall noise. Just don't forget to reset everything when you don't need to be silent anymore. If you are already in position for an ambush with your engine off, you are almost entirely silent in this configuration. So just wait for that convoy to draw in close. Although the game offers a manual TDC through the attack periscope, you can also calculate attack plans manually by copying the calculations of an NPC officer. This is great if you don't have enough time to do the calculations yourself, or if your officers are being too slow to cover a large convoy. You can do this by manually entering the calculations in the bottom left of the map when you have a potential target selected. Simply copy the state, speed and course of a different target in the convoy that has already had an attack plan calculated for it. This works because the convoy is travelling in formation, so you can generally assume each ship in the formation is travelling at the same course and speed. You then need to use the game's ruler to guesstimate the distance to the target. This can be tricky as the tools the game provides you with are very very imprecise. So if the target is over one kilometre away, or one half a mile away, I recommend using multiple smaller measurements in order to get a more accurate reading. Once this is complete, you can attack as normal. Langsamer. 40 Sekunden bis Torpedoeinschlag. Treffer. 10 Sekunden bis Einschlag. Schwere Schäden am Rumpf. Treffer. Torpedo choice seems to be one of those things that varies from captain to captain, but there are a few things to bear in mind when picking which type of torpedoes to use. T1, aka steam, torpedoes are very reliable. They leave a trail of bubbles that can announce their presence to targets, however. This makes them great for a variety of situations, but not so useful when setting up a typical convoy ambush. You can make T1 torpedoes even more useful, however, by waiting for nightfall. This prevents the enemy from seeing them, and thus gets rid of their main disadvantage. T2, aka electric torpedoes, by distinction, are best reserved for sneak attacks during the daytime. T2 torpedoes are basically silent, so you can fire off several of them in an initial attack. Their biggest downside is that they are quite unreliable, often turning out to be duds. Once you have T3 or better torpedoes, you should take those along, as they are significantly better than either T1 or T2 torpedoes in most, if not all, regards. Attempting to chase a convoy from the rear is highly inefficient. When travelling on electric engines, the U-boat is barely faster than a typical convoy, meaning that catching up and remaining stealthy is impractical. In addition, attacking from the rear does not provide for good targets. The stern of a freighter, or escort, is a much smaller target than attacking them from their broadside. It's also harder to escape from a convoy when you are facing the same direction as them. Instead, once you locate a convoy, disengage from them, plot an intercept course using your diesel engines, and stay clear of the convoy's observers. Once you are in position ahead of the convoy, 
wait for the convoy to close before submerging. Torpedo course you can use your electric engines to position yourself just off the broadside of the convoy, so that the convoy comes to where you are lying in wait. This gives you a great shot against any ships in the convoy, and also makes escape relatively simple. Kurs auf diese Koordinaten setzen. At the start of the game, you begin with 20 potassium absorbers. Place these in your ventilation in order to greatly improve the efficiency of the ventilation system when activated. This causes you to draw less electric power from the engine batteries, allowing you to stay underwater longer. I do however recommend saving them until they are needed, rather than wasting them on a short trip under the sea when the batteries will be charged shortly after anyway. Once you've finished your patrol, be sure to cash any reputation points you receive in order to increase your officer count. This lets you have more officers on board your ship, reducing the micromanagement needed to ensure all tasks on the boat get done. You can get reputation the fastest by completing all of the optional side missions provided by headquarters over the radio during a patrol. When you return to port, don't forget to allocate officer skills. Officer skills provide big bonuses, and after a few patrols, you will find your officers start to become specialists in certain tasks. A bonus tip I discovered while making this video is that it's possible to fast travel. By precisely travelling to the circular waypoints dotted around the map, such as the Northern Approach, you unlock fast travel locations you can use to quickly get out to distant patrols. One final tip for early access. Don't forget to save often, as the game is prone to crashing and bugs. No amount of save scumming can prevent you from not having enough food though, so remember tip number one and be sure to pack extra rations. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the content, please do like it so I know to make more U-boat content in future.